Hey guys, it's Siobhan with Takiti and Beyond. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing monthly horoscope readings and this is for January 2020. So this reading is for Cancer and that can apply to Cancer Sun, Moon or Rising. I also recommend that you check out your other sign videos. So if this is your Sun sign, go check out your Moon and Rising signs as well so you get a better over I overall idea of what the energy is affecting you in the month of January. Uh, now keep in mind that this is a general reading so not all of the information or the messages will apply to everybody. Just take what resonates with you and leave the rest. All right, so let's jump into it, Cancer. We have all of the cards laid out. I'm just going to go ahead and turn them over. So your current self is coming up as the Wheel of Fortune. The theme of the month is the Seven of Wands. The key goal is the Ace of Wands. The obstacle is the King of Pentacles. The major accomplishment is the Hierophant. What to avoid, you have the Six of Pentacles. What to embrace, you have the Devil. Where to find support, you have the King of Swords. And advice and encouragement is the world. Okay, so overall, just right off the bat, you have a fair amount of major arcana. You have one, two, three, four, two court cards, and an ace. So this is pretty significant um, in terms of what's going on energetically. So there's lots of processing and a big major karmic ending to a cycle. So let's get into it. The current self energy is coming up as the wheel of fortune. I really see this as you guys coming out of a cycle of karma of some kind. So there may have been something where you continually self-sabotaged or I, this one is a pretty dark, you know, imagery in this particular card. It's not necessarily one of the like more positive Wheel of Fortunes, uh, but I think this is a good thing overall because you're allowed, or rather it's allowing you to come out of a period of self-deprecation, self-judgment um, is what I'm seeing as well. Self-judgment, which was creating suffering. So this is a, a karmic cycle where a lesson has been learned and it's time to move on from that. So that's kind of where you're at right now, especially since we just turned over into the new year, the new decade. There's a lot of things that are coming up for review so that you can be aware of them and let them go and not repeat them as we move into 2020. So the theme of the month, you guys have the Seven of Wands, and this is represented in this deck by Mummy. So a mummy, like an Egyptian mummy. I like how they have a little cat guarding him because cats were sacred in Egyptian times. But uh, the Seven of Wands, this can indicate protecting yourself, sticking up for yourself, um, standing up for what you believe in as well. So this can be ritualistic in terms of what you believe in, really putting it into action. So if you believe in something, you want to invest your time and energy into it, you want to make a daily habit or a daily practice out of it. And some people may not understand that, um, but if it's in alignment with what you believe and you feel that that's right for you, then you just go ahead and do that. So that's the theme of the month is kind of getting into your own cycles, getting into your own um, ability to, to express yourself creatively through what you believe. So rather than sticking to what other people believed um, out of fear of judgment or judging yourself for what you wish to practice, it's going to be breaking away from that. And the key goal is the Ace of Pentacles. So this is you kind of stepping into this new opportunity, new way of doing things. There may even be an opportunity that is presented to you. So this could be um, like, a, I see you guys kind of starting a new diet. Somebody out there anyway, this doesn't have to, have to apply to everybody, but I see somebody out there starting a new diet and or a new way of working with their finances especially there's something here about money and religion for somebody as well now that's not going to apply to everybody but there's something to do with charitable giving perhaps you're starting a new um volunteer effort something something practical something hands-on something you can immerse yourself in perhaps this comes to you as an opportunity like there's somebody looking for a position um, and you have the necessary prerequisites or skills to fill that position even if it's not a paid position it's going to 
um, be an investment for you and it will pay off perhaps not monetarily but emotionally okay let's see the obstacle to overcome this month is the king of pentacles and i they've got it here as a leprechaun and the leprechaun is very um <laughs> scary looking i really see this as kind of that greed the leprechaun's gold the promises of wealth and then nothing really comes from it or that the the gold disappears so this to me is really not so much about finances for you at this point this is really just about standing in what you believe in so there may have been beliefs in the past where you had to you had to give back financially but now you may be doing it in a new way either giving to yourself in a new way or giving to others in a new way outside of money specifically so I also see this as you coming to some kind of a realization, um, like an expanded awareness or consciousness of something that you didn't necessarily have around money. So this could be around lack, um, the way that you think about money, the way that you acquire money, the way that your parents thought about money. Yeah, so this is kind of like how you f perceive yourself to be lucky in relation to abundance and specifically monetary abundance so money because the wheel of fortune is coming out right on top of this king of pentacles and he's holding a horseshoe this little leprechaun so i feel like perhaps if you were unlucky with money in the past then this is going to give you an opportunity to heal the underlying issues of that like the root cause of that which potentially is like a lack mentality or a belief around money that you have to work hard for it or that money is bad or any of these really negative associations that people can have with money that kind of stem from the society that we live in. But I feel like you're changing your view on it to something a little bit more, um, a little bit more expanded it's not so much in that limited 3d perspective there's going to be um, this higher understanding of money as like a type of energy and the fact that you can create that through your passion and through your manifestation okay so the major accomplishment this month being the hierophant you've got the voodoo warlock <laughs> so this is your ability to um, either consult a, a, a religious authority figure of some kind for information or for guidance around how to go about healing some of this underlying drama as it relates to money or these beliefs as it relates to money and it gives you this opportunity to create and manifest through ritual. I really see ritual being important for you guys this um, this month in January and going forward into just the rest of the year in general. It's going to be about where you really put your intention and your emotions and you'll see the connection between your emotions and your feelings that you had in the past towards money and how those affected your luck and then moving forward you now have this sort of um, this secret esoteric knowledge around how to acquire abundance by manifesting it from within. So what to avoid? You have the six of pentacles. This I really see this as getting trapped in the old ways of thinking um, about having to to balance your money in some way or to think about it's yeah it's like a, like a web or a trap here of that old sort of way of thinking about it that you may have periods where you kind of fall back into that and then you'll see the results of it pretty pretty instantly i see that your manifestation is going to be really quick um because you're closing out this cycle you've got a fresh start um when it comes to finances and career as well so if you guys are thinking about starting up any kind of a charitable um, way to give back to your community or to a cause that you really believe strongly in, then first start by doing that energetically, not monetarily. For some reason, that's a message that comes through right now. Um, 
doesn't have to be about the money. You can volunteer to something just by giving your time and energy or your thoughts. So focus a lot on manifesting money first and foremost and not falling into that old trap of beliefs that kind of kept you limited around your finances and your ability to manifest and um, create through the law of attraction. So what to embrace? You have the devil. This is pretty interesting. It's the demon. So embrace your inner demons. Embrace the shadow side, um, the beliefs that were held about this issue, this whole underlying issue. It's really about manifestation. And there may have been a belief within your ancestry or within your your parentage that was very strict around um, the idea of manifestation and ritual because it may have been very Catholic, Catholic, Christian, religious in some way where yes, religions have their own rituals and they have their own sort of forms of manifestation, but specifically Christianity, it can have sort of a very narrow view of what what is acceptable in terms of manifestation and what is not. So um, if it was termed, an, you know, if there was any kind of magic or any kind of uh, esoteric information or rituals or law of attraction, it was really seen as, you know, like that that devil energy, but it's not. It, it's, it's just the law of the universe. It's just how things work. And this is kind of allowing you to shift your ideas about this, your beliefs about this. And figure out where those beliefs came from. Did they come from you? Did you learn them in childhood? Did you learn them from your parents? Did they learn that from their parents? And so on and so forth, going back into your ancestry. That's where this kind of karmic cycle needs to come to an end. It's through connecting this lineage, where it came from, why it occurred, and how it's affected your life. So the devil, the demon, this is really embracing um, that aspect of you. Also, the devil card is Capricorn. So this can be also about manifestation, being very goal-oriented and creating at a very physical level when it comes to money. So embrace being a little bit more... Um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Like planning, planning a little bit better, budgeting perhaps, saving as well. Perhaps in the past you really, really gave a lot and that can be good for manifestation because we do have to have an open transit of give and receive. But that being said, it can, if you over give or if you're spending frivolously, um, that can be a lack mentality as well. Whether or not you have a lot coming in, if you're spending it really quickly, then you don't really have a lot to show for it. So that can be part of the cycle as well. That's kind of what I'm seeing with this Knight of Swords. It's almost like whatever was coming in was also leaving really quickly. So even if you were making money hand over fist, it's like you couldn't get it to stick around. So where to find support is the Knight of Swords. This is the Barbarian. <laughs> and I really see this as taking action, like leaping into this new um, way of thinking, especially with clarity of thought. So this is this this is what's allowing this cycle to close out. It's bringing your awareness to these issues because without consciousness, there can, there can be no change. So we really do have to kind of pick apart our motivations for things, especially as it relates to our beliefs. And when it comes to money, you know, there can be a lot of different factors, you know, there's, and there can be contradicting beliefs there as well. So you may believe that you are abundant, but then you may have some underlying beliefs where it's like money is negative or it can be used for evil uh, or something like that. So, and these things can stem from past lives as well. That's what a message that just came through from the world and the Wheel of Fortune. Because they're karmic, they don't have to have originated in this lifetime. This could have been not just from your ancestry or from your ancestral line, but from past lives. Maybe perhaps you were... Um, a priest or something like that, like you worked in an environment where abundance and money were not something that you were allowed to acquire. So you may have had like a vow of chastity or no, sorry, not chastity, a vow of poverty. <laughs> and that has kind of limited your ability to manifest in this lifetime because that vow is carried over. Right. So being aware of that and clearing those vows is very important. 
because otherwise they'll continue subconsciously within your energy field, within your soul blueprint and within your mind. And you, you may not put two and two together, like why do I keep having this issue? But it's because in a past life you were a monk or a priest or I'm getting Catholic. Somebody, somebody lived a life as a, a priest or somebody, there's something to do with religion and the belief that money was was evil and that acquiring it was bad or that it led to corruption or something like that. So this is a, a shift in your beliefs around this because that's not necessarily true. It can be, but energy is neutral and um, and money is just energy. So it's neutral. It's what the what the individual using it decides to do with it that makes it good or bad. So Knight of Swords is a big shift in consciousness for you. It's a big shift in the way that you're believing or you're seeing something. There's clarity here and it's going to happen really quickly. This can also indicate air travel. Um, but I really just see this as slaying your demons. I don't know why the air travel came up. <laughs> Maybe somebody's planning a trip and you're worrying, you're worrying or thinking about finances to plan your trip. And this is an indication that shifting the way that you think about your finances into one of abundance, you know, knowing that this trip is something that is an investment. This is this is time and energy that um, is worth the investment because you can get money back, but you can't get your time back and you can't get your experiences back. So if you if you don't take the risk, then you won't gain the reward now. Uh, I also see this, like I was saying, is slaying your inner demons. So it's not necessarily about destroying or slaying your demons. It's it's more so about being aware that they're there um, and then kind of acknowledging them, saying, okay, I understand that this is why this, this belief became a thing and now I can change that. So advice and encouragement is the world. So this is the Ouroboros. This is the snake that eats its own tail. This is all about death and rebirth, reincarnation, cycles being infinite and being able to transcend. Now I do see there's a little bit of a limitation. They're showing me the chains that are binding the, the Ouroboros. So I really see this as, again, same thing here with the Wheel of Fortune this person's chained up. There's chains there and they're being tortured by these, these religious people. So I really see this for somebody in particular, this may not resonate with everybody, but somebody has past life karma around a, a vow of poverty as it relates to some aspect of the church and, or there's guilt there around money being misused in the church or something like that. So I don't know. Keep an open mind, guys. If you'd like to get more information around this, if this resonates with you and you want to know more how to clear this, then please reach out to me for a past life reading. Um, we can also do um, a clearing at the energetic level using Reiki to help to cut these cords and clear this past life karma. Okay, so let's grab an angel oracle card to close out the reading, Cancer. Moon cycles. Okay, so again, we have this theme of cycles because these are cycles. This is cycles. So moon cycles, Archangel Haniel, notice how the moon affects your energy and manifestations and capitalize upon these cycles. Yeah, so manifestations. It, it, this is the whole overall theme of this reading for you guys. It's really about what you're manifesting. And what the, it, I feel like if you've been manifesting unconsciously from this place of past life karma, then you will not have been satisfied with what you have, even if you were able to manifest more. It's almost as if, like I was saying before, like it comes in and then it leaves just as quickly as it came. So this is really about standing in your power, embracing your ability to clear these old karmic timelines, to embrace these, these shadow aspects that have been learned. These, you know, these are not inherent. These have been learned through lifetimes or from parents etc and capitalizing upon the moon cycles so new moons are really great times to set manifestations into action so setting your intentions putting them out there doing some kind of a ritual as well to really solidify um, with action your beliefs to create opportunities and luck to manifest new opportunities coming in for you to exist within abundance and not from a need of, of lack because if you manifest from a place of lack you're going to continue to get more lack so this is kind of what that king of pentacles leprechaun is talking about 
you know, be very careful about your intentions. Be very aware of the underlying feelings that you're charging those intentions with and be clear with yourself about why you have those feelings in the first place. So that's really this, the whole message of this reading in a very roundabout way. Again, it's like a cycle. <laughs> it's like we started with pieces. Now we've got to the end and we can kind of see how everything ties together. So good luck with that, Cancer. Again, if you need additional support with that, um, with clearing work, with past life, um, information and manifestation when it comes to these kinds of cycles then please reach out to me all of the information will be in the description box below just hit the show more button or the little upside down triangle to get a drop down list of all of my services and offerings how to reach me how to book uh, an appointment and um, yeah so thank you guys for watching if you resonated don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel hit the bell notification if you'd like to see more here at Two Kitty and Beyond, I do monthly horoscope readings for all the signs, as well as energy updates for the collective ascension of humanity and the new earth, and um, general spiritual chit chats. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I love you, and we will see you next time. Bye.